Okay, we are now starting the Chaos Weekly meeting on February 25, 2020. Welcome everyone. So on the agenda, we have one item right now, and that is to continue the conversation from the mailing list about which platform Chaos should use for its repositories. We're on GitHub right now, and there's some talk on the mailing list about possibly moving to GitLab, but we just discussed before the meeting started that we might not have the people on the call who use GitLab or GitHub on a daily basis. So we will defer unless someone has an opinion they would like to add to the conversation today. My hope was that if we get the right people on the call, we can make a table with pro and con or which platform and then list it all out and then have a nice uh, table to use in our ongoing conversation. But maybe do that on the mailing list. Okay, that was a quick, <laughs> quick topic. Sorry, I'm uh, kind of distracted. Sorry about that. That's all right, Sully. Um, I was about to ask you something. So I went back to last week's meeting minutes and there was an action item for you to start drafting a readme about the release cadence. I just wanted to check in with you, see if there was any update. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, I'm double checking here. Oh no, I made a suggestion about starting the draft as we go through the process. So, so it, it was the idea that if you draft the um, document while you're actually prototyping the process, like the process is being driven by the discussions that everyone is doing. And so we're, we're just creating that doc as we go. We're not doing it, you know, after the fact. Um, I believe that was the idea. <laughs> uh, so, so basically it's like the working draft that we keep editing. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so just to clarify, did you uh, did you say you had like a like a GitHub issue or something related to it open somewhere, or was it just? No, no, I just went to the meeting minutes from last week, and I was not there, and it looked like okay. you had an uh, action item, but no, you just made a comment. So, sorry yeah, for missing the minutes. Oh no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Um, yeah, so so I think there is there was the action item about talking to Matt about um, I guess the um, go ahead for for the what's it called again the badging um, yeah so so like feedback from badging we're gonna actually do this weekend we haven't got got into that bit yet so okay where will this okay so. That's a different topic, DNI badging. I want to stay on the release cadence real quick. Continue. So what was the conversation last week? The agenda or the minutes from last week don't really capture any thoughts. Was anyone- uh, I think captured in the doc itself because the doc is the thought, right? So, so people were just uh, looking at that doc and making edits as we were going through the discussion, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so did we talk about next steps on how to move this forward? Does anyone have an opinion on this?
I did suggest that we do the readme as we were going through it. <laughs> That's all. Um, but I guess the, um, I, I, I think it's fair if we share the screen and look at the doc together, maybe it kind of sparks a little bit of memory. Um, I, I guess um, for me, it, it really was, um, I guess just, you know, the idea of the readme from my end, but um, okay. did anybody get, um, yeah. So that Google Doc that was developed last week, is that readme? Um, no, so so the idea was the readme was just putting out the outline. So I said, okay, why don't we start drafting the readme based on that outline? And then next meeting when we're talking, we're basically looking at a doc that elaborates whatever whatever those points would actually look like in the readme and if we're refining if we're refining the process um, people are basically able to refer to the process and you know spelled out and, and with the details um, and and just make edits to the readme doc itself okay. um, that that was really a tangent to the meat of the whole outline right so uh, but I mean, just because we talked about it, I wanted to clarify. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so one thing that we talked about in the common working group was we made some big changes to the focus areas. And one of the ideas is to use this as an example for the new release cadence process. I didn't think we were using the change to the focus groups as as that, but the the metric that we just did. Oh, that's right, because we added the uh, diversity. Yeah, question. we we changed all of the focus groups when we couldn't figure out which one to add it to because the descriptions were so unclear that we couldn't remember we couldn't remember what we were talking about, and so we redid all the all the descriptions so that we could add that metric. But I think it's the completed metric that we want to include in the incremental release. I'm just capturing in the notes that the common working group redefined the focus areas to bring more clarity. Um, okay. And as, as the common working group works through releasing the new metric, I think we can spell out more details on the cadence and see how it works actually. Yeah, that sounds fair. Okay. You were talking about the DNI badging, Solens, that there's some feedback this week? Is this part of the DNI working group or is this a separate session or what is this? Yeah, so, so to clarify, um, uh, basically, um, um, like, I, I kind of uh, like the idea of hackathons when I'm doing collaborative work, when, when we have enough time to, you know, focus on, on the um, work that needs to be done. Um, and so me and Matt kind of share that style. So we decided Every other Sunday, we meet, uh, I guess, for two or three hours minimum, like two hours minimum, three hours, maybe more. It depends on what we need. Um, and we just give it a push. Um, so, so I guess it's just, um, you know, like the one hour is good for GTV by the book, like, you know, follow the outline and uh, action items and, and then go out and do them. Uh, but I guess what we're doing is we're dwelling more as we work. Um, and, and so um, we have this routine slot blocked every other week. Um, so um, basically feedback we get between those, you know, work sessions, uh, just basically get, uh, you know, get, get done at that point, you know. So it's a biweekly um, sprint that is done on one day. So... <laughs>
Okay, I'm trying to capture this in the minutes. That is helpful to know. Okay. Yeah. So, so I guess dwelling is how we ended up finding badges, badging as the org name not being used in, uh, you know, by anyone on GitHub. Um, it's this kind of thing that, you know, when you're alone, you might spend the time to do this, but when you're, when you're working with another person, um, you, you don't get too distracted into an idea that sounds cool to you. And then when you say to another person, you're like, oh, okay, that wasn't really that good. Um, so, so it's just a different working style, which I hope we actually come to better describe um, um, as, as we try this experiment moving forward. Okay. All right. I want to use this also as uh, to, to give a shout out to Justin Flory, who um, posted a blog post about ChaosCon and um, it's very detailed on the different sessions and his thoughts about them. I just thought that was a really nice contribution. What else do we have? So on the GDPR, um, it's on my mind. I just did not get to it. Okay. Oh, we had, that's right, the community handbook was um, a topic that was deferred to this week. And I am looking up on the mailing list. I had sent an email to the mailing list about roles and resp uh, responsibilities in the chaos project. And I did this after listening to Vicky's, Vicky Brazor's talk about succession planning. Um, there, I found the original email, I'll put it Okay, I put the link in the meeting minutes to the email. The, what I took away from listening to that talk is that we should, and this is for many, many reasons, not just succession planning, we should document what work is being done in the community, what the different roles are, um, because it will help people coming to the community to understand what we do, how we work. And if they are looking to take on responsibilities, they have a, so, some outline for what they could be doing. And then also if one of us disappears, we have a documentation for what this person or the, the role that disappeared was doing so we can find someone else to take on those roles. And we can also start in more clearly defined terms, share the different work that is happening in the chaos community. So th that was the starting point 
of that email. Now, what are, you, what are your thoughts on that topic? Um, it's an excellent topic. Um, so we, we, we're just hitting that um, idea of succession planning or like continuity. Um, you know, people coming in should know where to begin digging or, you know, like how to start thinking about solving problems that are basically based on conventions and styles and, you know, very, very local things to every um, uh, project. Uh, so this was affecting us in uh, Node.js, the new website, Node.js.dev, uh, where basically we had two members who kind of heard the previous generation of members before they left say a few things, leave a lot of work, and then they moved on. Um, and basically the team is now full of new members um, and two members who kind of understood the gist so, so you know, it's, it's always important to um, retain documents on what is done so that people can, you know, fill that um, role um, and ask the right questions. So... I, I hear you as that's a, another good example for why we should be doing this. What I'm thinking right now is maybe we can, um, maybe can make this a little working session for the next 10 minutes. If I, if I may invite everyone to write down what they are doing in the chaos project. So uh, do we want to put this in a separate doc or? I just created a Google doc and you should all have right access to it. And what I'm thinking, and this is my proposal, we are working on this document as a draft to be submitted to the community handbook. Um, I understand it's an early, early draft and we'll probably rework it in the future. And my question to you is, what are you doing in the chaos project? If it's already represented by one of the things in this list, great. Otherwise, add it. If you think it's part of a role, which are the subheadings, then add it underneath that subheading. Otherwise, you can um, create a new role that we have in the CAS project. Uh, which heading should I put being distracted under? <laughs> I think you can put a new heading somewhere as being a human being. All right. Well, yeah. Well, I was going to put something down, but I, I got distracted. So, <laughs> like, honestly, I, I so far I've been just learning to be a chaos member. I've done maybe one or two small things, but they're, they are obviously already uh, existing, so. I'm just talking away on mute. Um, I did a section for the <laughs> Chaos Governing Board member because you have Chaos Board co-lead. So we should probably also document just membership in the board as well. Good idea. Um, so there's the thing coming up, the um, um, outreachy, um, uh, like I'm going to co-mentor, me and Matt, we're going to co-mentor. Um, does that go under a specific header? Does it belong in this doc? Yes. And I think we need a new subheading 
called mentor. Maybe we had a few new people join, so I will share the minutes document again and point out that we are right now <clears throat> working through a document about roles and responsibilities in the chaos project. And we are trying to document, so here, let me share this, roles and responsibilities. So we are editing this Google Doc right now to capture what are all the things being done by different people in the chaos community. So if you are new to the chaos community, feel free to take a look and get a sense for what's happening, ask questions. If, you, if something is not clear, because this document is meant for well, existing and new members alike. And if you are part of the chaos community and have already been doing things, then please uh, make sure that whatever you're doing for the chaos project is somehow represented here in this document. Yeah. Whoever is typing, oh, thanks, Georg. I was actually kind of digging through my docs to try to find, you know, what I want to put under this. So thank you. All right. Um, so do we um, do we keep those um, markdown files in a particular repo about um, uh, Google Summer of Code or Outreachy, the actual um, proposal document? I've, I've been just trying to find that. Um, link in my email, I guess. Our governance repo, the chaos governance on GitHub. That's where all okay. those documents live. All right. Thank you. So I don't see a lot of typing going on right now. Are there any any thoughts on this list? Uh, is there any feedback? So I guess thank you for putting the bullet points where uh, you know it would have taken me half an hour to just figure out how to sort through them. So thank you. You're welcome. So Don, I know you added board members. Mm -hmm. Participate. Yeah, and I, I started putting a couple of things down, and then 
couldn't really think of anything else. I know we do more than that. Rain Ildiko, I know you're also on the board. Are there things that you do in your role as board members? Not a lot lately. Not my intention, though. Uh, so we'll see how I can change that in the near future. Okay, I'm not, I'm not trying to get you to do more. I'm just trying to reflect on what is it that board members are doing or should be doing so we can document it. Yeah, the document is less what are specific people doing and what, um, and more of if you're in this role, what are the things that you might be doing? Oh, okay. Sorry, I missed the, the first half of the call. Uh, no I have another one that ran over. Um, well, I, well, I can basically start with what I try to do, at least as a minimum activity, which uh, dialing into these calls, for example, or at least following the, the monthly ones, just to kind of making sure that I, as a board member, am up to date with what's happening. And... Um, I think that obviously more um, involvement than that would be desirable uh, for a board member, but not necessarily necessary. Um, I also um, basically cut a little back on, um, on conferences in terms of chaos, but I, I think that could also be something that I should look into as a board member. I don't know, giving presentations or uh, participating some more activities um, at industry events, just to kind of make sure that we are spreading the word about the project and, uh, and representing it well also, if that makes sense. I don't know how many other board members we have on the call and what they think. Also, I'm on my mobile, so I currently don't have access to uh, to type. Um, but we'll do once I, I'm back with the laptop. This is very helpful, Iziko. And we are typing up what you're saying. So thank, thank you, you so much. Good contribution already, yeah. <laughs> awesome. I'll think about it more because, well, so we obviously have different roles within a project. And when it comes to like board members, that's more of a higher level oversight of the project as well. So I don't think that it should be, let's say, a requirement for board members to get, uh, get down to, I don't know, coding level of involvement. Um, although if they are interested and available to do it, they should definitely uh, go into that just kind of. I was more brainstorming around the, the side of the middle ground, like what we can expect and what makes sense from that perspective. Okay, excellent, thank you. Ray, I know you're also very active in the chaos project. Yeah, I, I try to add a couple of bullets there. Um, I mean, I, including <clears throat> like the last one, I mean, want to be a, I mean, I need to find an adjective, be a, like a positive representative of the project to the outside world. But if you can wordsmith, help wordsmith it, that would be. I appreciate it. So being that I'm a new member, I thought maybe we need that header. And I made an outline for that as well at the bottom. Uh, you know, at least those bullet points I can make up and actually <coughs> not be like um, getting it wrong or anything. Um, so I don't know if you want something like that to be, oh, great. So I guess it is a role. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good to have some guidance for new members on what they can do.
Yeah, uh, the catch up on GitHub and other tools point. Um, if we have a moment in the end, like a couple of minutes in the end, there's a um, an idea that's that floated um, regarding docs. Um, it was simmering for a while and basically finally came through um, that I just want to bring to the attention of folks here. Um, so it, it's about creating, you know, one-on-one -on -one docs um, that are meant to be more accessible for GitHub and other kind of things. We'll get into it, in, you know, after, after uh, we're done with this. So it just relates to the catch-up on GitHub and other tools, a uh, bullet point that I added here. Um, anyways, if we have time in the end, I would like, please, um, you know, a few minutes. That would be great. Okay, yeah. Um, can you add it to the bottom of our agenda? So yep. we can make sure to uh, touch on that. Okay. I think we have a pretty good list here of what is happening in the chaos project. What we don't have is currently maintainers, um, uh, software maintainers or software developers. <laughs> it's uh, rather interesting that we are an open source project and we don't have a role for software maintainer or developer. So I'll create one at the bottom. So I don't know if anyone here is in, in any of those roles. Um, but we can define what we think someone in that role should be doing. Uh, Georg, what's the difference between the working group maintenance and the software maintenance? At the very top of the list, we have the working group maintainer. Now you're talking about software maintainer. Is that not the same uh, role? So please, everyone chime in if you have uh, thoughts on this. The way I see it is that the working groups are metrics oriented and the way they work is different from a traditional software development process. Yeah. And so I, yeah, I, I think that's the key point. Like you're creating the content or the matter, um, the, you know, knowledge domain in, in working groups. And then, um, Software is purely just the logic, um, you know, the, the implementation, um, you know, of, of, you know, the knowledge that you generate in the working groups. Uh, would that be a good way to differentiate the two and relate them? Yeah, but uh, still, no, no matter how you look at software maintainer, you always want to, uh, materialize yourself, concretize yourself at any level of granularity, right? Yeah. So you don't stay up abstract. So, so I think both are just doing the same, is just the same thing. Um, I, I think software maintainers more like DevOps, like you look at the issues that relate to a bug in the software, um, you know, you, you um, you know, plan for releases of the software. Um, you do align yourself with the work group maintainers, um, but you know, like, um, you don't necessarily have to know enough about software to be a work group maintainer. In fact, sometimes it helps to, um, you know, ensure that you don't need the requirements to be good at both uh, in order for you to cover um, the broad range um, of, of, you know, knowledge and the broad range of, um, you know, getting the software done. 
anyways, I guess we're, um, so, so we have to put that, put that bullet point. I'm distracting everyone, sorry. <laughs> so I tried to capture what I think software maintainer and software developer do in the chaos project at the bottom of no, the document. I'm not talking about software developer and software maintainer. I'm talking about working group maintainer and uh, so this other maintainer down here you just wrote is software maintainer. Yeah, so work group works on the actual metric documents, right? They don't work on the um, software that allows you to analyze or co collect or whatever you do with those particular metrics. So um, maybe maybe we can, uh, do we have a link for, uh, let me, let me, just uh, share my screen. I don't know if you guys want that, but uh, I can share my screen and we can, we can go to a work group repo versus, you know, the software repo. Would that help demonstrate it? I, I, I want to understand Armstrong's argument. I'm, I'm not quite understanding what your concern is. Can you maybe say that again, Armstrong? Yeah, for example, a software maintainer is the same as a metrics working group maintainer. Because no matter how we look at metrics, no matter, even if it is at the level of, still at the abstract level that has not yet been implemented, by attaching the word the maintainer, it's like you are, to me, both at, uh, describe one and the same uh, role. Okay, so maybe we could call it a repository maintainer, and then it applies pretty much the same for metrics and software if we just replace the metrics here. Yeah, I think that would make some more sense. Um, I, you know, if, if I'm not uh, thinking, you know, on, on um, what you just- hi. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Good evening. Techno Spark. Do you want to say something? Oh, yes. Um, okay. Hi, I'm Noela. Hey, nice yeah. to meet you. Hi, Noela. Can you speak, please? Maybe there are technical issues because we cannot hear you. So, um, I, I yeah. just wanted to throw one word out. Um, Instead of work group maintainer, the ISO uses work group convener. Um, I don't know if we want to explore, because I think the word maintainer here is, is where um, the difference really lies. That's, you know, that's my takeaway from how I think Armstrong was trying to. Yeah. yeah. So they use the word convener and basically you, you know, the person who um, drives the collective effort um, yep. of, of the working so group. I, I'm, the, the goal of this exercise is not to define new roles or change language. I just want to capture what is happening in the chaos project right now. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll just call it a repo, the touring maintainer. And then just something crazy. Metric slash software. Okay. 
Okay, I'll just merge these two here at the top. Okay, well, I, I'm i gonna say, unless there are any more comments on this exercise, that I will close this. So last call. Anyone? Then we move on to our last topic. Sally, you had put uh, something on the agenda that you want to talk about. Yep. Um, so, um, so I, I guess you know um, some background. I, I think a few already know that. Um, um, so I'm one of the you know few people who struggles uh, with cognitive and visual um, um, fatigue, or you know burning out, I guess, or shutting down or, you know, so it, it relates really to um, how we kind of develop these fast lane tools that we use in our day to day work. Um, and those fast lane tools um, allow us to do more efficient work. Um, but if you're someone who struggles with, you know, visual learning disability, or, um, you know, neuro you know, not neurotypical, have, you know, a, a neurodivergent kind of aspect. Um, basically, you're creating all this um, um, stress that leaves you, um, A, sometimes unable to follow the same pace as everyone. Um, and, and then you're, you kind of feel up, you know, unable to stay on track with everyone as they go with, with the, you know, more typical rhythm. And the other problem is um, when you try to communicate, um, you're, you're kind of trying to communicate things um, in the more dominant language, which is the more typical language. Um, and, and so I've been really struggling for two years to try to you know, realize how everybody is really trying their best. Everybody is really trying to be inclusive, uh, but there are going to always be um, gaps or voids um, between how everyone looks at the problem of communication or miscommunication. Um, so, you know, um, I guess this week uh, kind of the idea came together um, and I'm just going to share my screen quickly. Um, so basically I do work with a Node.js project and you know, I've tried different working groups to see the different styles of communication that were happening. Um, and then um, GitHub kept introducing features as you know, uh, over my last two years. Um, and every time I try to search for the word accessibility and anything related to GitHub or accessibility and anything on the internet, I basically end up getting um, links to web development tools to allow you to create accessible content. And, you know, it kind of felt like it's an upside down concept here because um, if I'm looking for accessibility, it makes more sense to make sure the person who needs the accessible lane actually gets that lane, not the person who will create the content that would be searchable when you use the word accessibility. So, so there's, there's a whole missing story for content that is meant to be consumed by different, um, um, you know, users who have different capacities. Um, and just trying to solve that problem has so many unknowns, like an expanse of unknowns, that I think most people just freeze. Um, and, you know, everyone wants things to be more accessible. But like, we're not going to do like everything, but what is everything? And then, you know, people start to really hit that mental fuzz um, about, okay, this is a problem, not a solution. What do we do? Um, so today, I think the idea came together. Well, we can create a one-on-one -on -one readme for something like GitHub. Um, all open source contributors um, kind of go through a one-on-one -on -one document of some, you know, from some place, um, just to know the basics of GitHub, for instance. Um, it's not an extensive manual. Oh, it's like, oh, uh, sorry. Mike, Mike, 
I have a question about this idea. Is this something you're proposing the chaos project to do? Um, it's an idea that I think it would help to propose in chaos, to propose in OpenJS. Um, it's, it's, um, it's an idea that, um, yeah, so, so it, it is really meant to be just pitching the idea at first, um, whether or not we're gonna do it here or not, uh, it's going to be up to the group. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so maybe, maybe if you can put in the document where this work is happening and if anyone has questions, we can um, answer any questions about this idea, about this uh, frictionless documentation and having one-on-one -on -one readme documents. So right now, this is just a HackMD draft. It's just like a gist, and then people can basically comment. So the link is in the minutes. Um, yep, it's uh, right there in the minutes. Um, but could I just show quickly um, the, the example links here just to explain where this is coming from? Or are you finding it way out of context? I'm, I'm having... Uh, trouble seeing how this relates to chaos and the metric definition work and everything. And yeah, so, so I just would so, like to keep it short if yes. it's not related or to make that connection very explicit. It is related. It is related. Right now, most MD files in all open source work, most communication in all open source threads are basically one style. And the whole idea of trying to paint the picture of this does not include many people um, was a very, very harsh path, honestly. Um, and, and so this effort is meant to basically be, let's take an important document that we have and try to actually create um, versions of it for different kind of, of you know, capacity. So is this something we could do with our metric definitions then maybe? It could apply to everything. So the example I was getting to, it's, it's you know, this, this basically is just one example. Um, so for them, basically, um, for the Autistic Self Advocacy Network, um, they basically have two type of readers for their documents. Ones who want the um, verbose, and ones who want really one that is more distilled, that can allow them to rely on memory capacity. Um, so, um, so, you know, for the different purposes, this one is the verbose, for instance, you would get the very detailed, um, but every single document they have has another one, which is an easier read. Um, for many people who are on the spectrum, if they sit in a room and people go through the more verbose document as a discussion, all they need is just a little visuals to allow them to remember what the context of each of this thing was. But if they go through this, the overload for them will make it impossible for them to actually get the same message from the same collaborative effort. Okay. Um, so I think, I think like Georg asked, this is not, uh, except I get you wrong, how does this relate to Kiosk Project? Um, so because keep in mind like Kiosk Project, once we, we are trying to harmonize the readme files to make things standard because our focus is really like on the matrices. Yeah. And how people will use those matrices is not really like our main concern at this point. Actually, it should the producers and the consumers. It should be because, um, because if we say open source are people who come to volunteer, then people who are, um, you know, typical in the way they go about reading and writing and accessing things and doing things, they, they cover about 90%. And then that leaves 10% to have about 90% of the different capacities to access information. If they start an open source project to make everything that is made by the collective accessible for 90 or whatever different permutations, 
Um, that is the anti-definition of inclusivity. In what chaos does, in who uses what chaos does, uh, and not just chaos, open source in general. The problem is escalating, and then that's why I bring it to the forefront. Um, if we create a readme document that is only going to be um, um, accessible to certain majority, yes, it is the majority, um, it is not um, yeah. uh, inclusive, it is actually exclusive of the rest. You okay. see what I mean? So what, what, I'm, what I'm hearing you say, Sala, is that there are ideas that we can use in how we frame documents in the Chaos Project. And there is a conversation ongoing right now in the Diversity and Inclusion Working Group about maybe even producing a metrics toolkit that simplifies the metrics into more actionable. But I think some of the design choices that you showed us, like using very simple language, removing all the extra and having pictures, maybe we can use those ideas in creating the metrics toolkit as yeah. uh, one place to implement your idea here. Yeah, so, so think of the internationalization workflow when people create different version, different languages uh, for the same knowledge base. So just think of this, this model um, and reappropriate it to get people who have different accessibility, um, um, you know, we can call them different, uh, I don't know, like I, I don't know what to call them, but like different capacities um, and, and come up with simple um, variations that you could, you know, align with, create a set of variations. You know, this one is easy to read, this one is um, uh, screen readable, really screen readable, uh, not just because, you know, it screen reads um, in the same, um, you know, format that it's written, but rather it actually is intended to read right. Um, so, so it's just an idea and the buy-in to have baby steps across more than one project um, is really going to make this evolve into hopefully one day something that everybody can do and has an idea how to do right. Um, right now, everybody's waiting for someone to come with an idea. Let's do it together. That's all. Gotcha. OK. Our we are almost out of time. So any last, last thoughts on this topic? Otherwise, we close the meeting. Then I thank everyone for your participation today. And I look forward to seeing you on a working group meeting throughout the week or seeing you uh, next week. Perfect. All right. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.